Um, my name is Caroline von Waldberg, and I'm playing Veronica Sawyer in Heather's the Musical. Hey, I'm Matt McQueen, and I'm directing Heather's the Musical. I'm Brianne Stevens, and I'm the executive producer for Heather's. Awesome. So, first question for you guys. Um, how did this all get started? It basically started like almost a year ago. Uh, it starts in April when our new board of directors gets brought on. Um, and we take the shows that are selected from our spring journal meeting. So our membership kind of makes a long list of shows and we take it as a board and we consider each of them. So we look into how much they cost, what the production would be like, the casting, the balance of... Was it all you know, musicals when you guys were doing Always the musicals, list? yeah. yeah okay. CCP exclusively does musicals. Okay. Um, just because there's other routes on campus that do other theater productions, like like the theater department does other things. Okay. So we like to just do musicals. So we look into all these aspects and we kind of weigh what would be best for Curtain Call. Um, so Heather's, we looked at a few other ones um, and a lot of them had pros and cons and Heather's was kind of up there with a few others. And when it came down to it, we got the rights for Heather's and we thought this show was very exciting. Obviously very dark, so we had to kind of um, Kind of see what would what it would be like from an outside perspective. What lines looking, you can draw. On like <laughs> if it would be okay to do this on campus. Um, so like Matt definitely had reservations when we were when you first saw it. I think you didn't like it. A lot of when murder to deal with, I guess. Yeah. 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 The first the first time yeah. I listened through it just felt really flippant with a couple of different topics, but once you kind of dig into it and look at. It less is like a bunch of musical numbers together that are super lewd and like also um, just inappropriate. Not not inappropriate. They're they're inconsiderate. Um, but once you get past it and look at it as a, a whole entity, you can really see where the writers are coming from. And they put together something that is actually considerate, and it and it comes at some interesting issues from a good angle, a nice. unique angle. So. so I guess segueing in, uh, what would you say like the major thematic things would be from an outside standpoint? Yeah. So for me, it's that. Um, I think the main thing is you look at every character and they all have a, a big spectrum of personality traits and, and it also goes into a lot of their past and, and you can kind of derive how they became the way they are. And so the biggest thing for me is is empathy and the fact that as humans there there's no there's no right or wrong, there's no, you know, good guy and bad guy. We're just a bunch of people who've had a bunch of experiences that have ended up leading us to where we are and and uh, at the end of the show, Veronica kind of shows that, like, look, we're, we're here, we are who we are, let's move forward, but also, like, it, it lets us consider our paths and how they affect us, so... Cool. It's, yeah. So I guess moving off of that, um, how, how do you say you work with that, like, empathy theme that uh, Matt's talking about, where, you know, um, you're talking about those themes and, and working with, you know, trying to not make it too dark, I guess, for, you know, being on campus, but yeah. keeping it fun and quirky. Um, I think it's just a really well-written uh, musical. Um, I mean, there's tons of jokes thrown in, and I mean, some of them are kind of off-color, but I feel like once the mood is set, like, people are kind of ready to have a laugh. Um, and, I mean, the characters are written really well, but also everyone in the cast has put in a lot of work into, um, I don't know, just putting in their best efforts to making enjoyable characters rather than people that you just watch on stage doing things, these things, and you're yeah. like, why? And you like connect with them. Yeah, them. yeah, no, um, everyone in the cast has been doing a really good job in uh, just making likable characters, and it's, again, really well written, so it all kind of um, harmonizes really well. Cool. Yeah. So I guess, back to Matt, how do, you, um, how do you work with something like, you know, the movie's obviously really big, and it's called yeah. classic, and, you know, there's so many people that are so you know, driven by that one storyline. How do you, as a director, deal with that, and how do you, you know, make it your own but as well you know appeal to those fans who would you know be a diehard Heathers fan. Yeah so for me I, I had never heard of the movie before we got into the musical and um, so I watched it I, I didn't like it that much. Lots of research. The first time through I watched it uh, I watched it on YouTube at almost two times speed because I was getting bored of the movie <laughs> but um, I, uh, I got through it and so I know that that's a, a lot of people will come and they want to see they want to see us paying homage to the movie so we definitely did as much as we could in terms of costuming to make it authentic uh, 80s costuming with the big hair and the just gross, disgusting clothing. <laughs> yeah, and, really grungy and, look to yeah, it. Our, they look awesome. Oh, they look they insane. Look so yeah. Cool, so you stay tuned. Yeah, yeah awesome. our whole production team, our, our makeup, hair, sets, costume, just and, and props, just put on like a really nice physical show to get that feel. Cool. In terms of um, how to like 
make it our own. For me, the, the most important part is making sure that the the rehearsal team and everybody involved, which is the cast and the choreo and the vocals and then myself, are are collaborative so everybody can kind of throw it an opinion because I know that I, I like I said, I don't know that much about the movie and I watch it and I read through the play and I have lots of ideas, but so does everybody else. So I think to get that authentic feel, it took a room full of people. Yeah, so which was a nice team the most fulfilling part. Yeah, it was so. sweet. Cool. So going back to your character, Ron. How does it, uh, like, how is it dealing with, you know, clearly you watched the movie or, or you did a bit of research to watch the movie and, you know, Winona, Winona Ryder is Winona Ryder. So how do you deal with, you know, stepping into those shoes and, and trying to emulate that, but as well having your own style, much like he would with directing? Yeah, um, I find that I don't really take too much from Winona Ryder in the movie. Um, she sets up, like, a really good character, but... Again, like because she's Winona Ryder and because it's like a cult classic movie, she can be like pretty passive about a lot of things and her character is just kind of like along for the ride, it mm -hmm. seems a lot of the times when in the musical, like you need a very, very actively engaging stage presence um, just to kind of hang on. Or Keep else everybody you, you just seem disinterested. Yeah. Like if you play it really passively and you're like singing these songs and you're on stage with other people, um, it's not really as engaging. So uh, there's definitely parts of the character that uh, I think were important to keep. And a lot of um, her really iconic lines are like saved and written into the musical as well. So that comes across too, which is fun. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's a big difference between theater and, and film. Actually, yeah. That you, can't, you can't play stuff small. You have to find ways to do it without actually doing it. That's yeah. Charles, it does come up as well. Cool. So like you're saying, the costumes and all that kind of yeah, stuff yeah. kind of brings it up. Awesome. Um, so going back, yeah. um, just talking about like technical uh, technical side of it. So dealing with, did you deal with any snags during the process? Like, did you have any budgeting issues? Was there anyone you know yeah. step putting a stop to the production during? Because obviously you guys are going into your what, third night tonight, right? Is that your second? Oh, second, second night. night. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, so uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, with any musical, I think you always have issues with any production. This year's team has been like amazing and really solid like amongst my executives so I'm like super proud of everyone it's just been so great um, I think with budgeting though it's a very like realistic part of the show like the budget is the budget and it's very hard to play with it especially since since we're we're a volunteer production we're student run we get sponsors from the community we go get financial aid from the university but our main source is getting like a uh, ticket sales so what we get is what we get and if we can't really go can't really go around that so I think every year we have some little budget issues but nothing that's especially huge especially not this year like I've been involved for three years and um, you run a tight ship yeah so you're still able to do so you're still able to do the big costumes I think that's another thing like, <laughs> I kind of like I, I know how to like feel things out at this point yeah. um, like going back to, like, just like it's everyone's everyone's been doing like, <laughs> <laughs> See, this is why you have other people interviewing with you. Yeah. Keep your, keep your life. Yeah. yeah, like looking back at like something like Spring Awakening two years ago and comparing it to this, it's very different. Like we have a huge budget compared to then, and um, I kind of know how to work with it from that point, from having to work with, I was treasurer back then, yeah. so I had to work with a tiny budget back then. And now I have this huge budget, so I just kind of appreciate and know how to handle it, I would say. Congratulations on your growth, then. Over the last <laughs> yeah. Couple, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, so. With production, though, it's I don't think there's been any, like, big snags or anything. Like, we've had no Pretty huge good. issues. Nobody quitting week. last minute or anything. Yeah. Right, that's all. No crazy it actresses was... doing any crazy <laughs> stuff. No, like, opening the night went so well. I was waiting for something, like, catastrophic to happen, and nothing effect. did. Um, like sets last year had some issues, but it got worked out. Yeah, but yeah, 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 was, yeah, yeah. Last year our set, yeah, we just like had to make a couple augmentations after yeah. for a show, which was it worked out. But this year, yeah, our set team had it all hammered out before opening night. Yeah. It's pretty sweet. It's been cool. really weird, actually. Just That's so like cool. How That's cool. Yeah. So taking a step back from the show itself, um, you guys are all students, except well, you're a master a student. student. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> still a student, but you're a better student. I'm like a big kid student. <laughs> big <now>. kid student. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, so all being students, I mean, you just gotta be so busy with everything, you know, fighting science, and you're doing all sorts of crazy stuff. Like doing that sort of stuff, how do you, you know, balance your time with? putting as much as you want to as into this, because clearly you guys are all very passionate about this, so you want to put your, your heart and your soul into it, but how do you balance both? 
Wanna go first? And yeah, feel free to, you know, you whoever wants to feel yeah. it. Oh, yeah. 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 Go first. Um, I think CCP has actually helped me with time management. Nice. Um, Just keeps you disciplined. Yeah, I run another club as well on top of this. <laughs> so, um, yeah. <laughs> so, All right. Um, I think um, having more to do and understanding how to work with my schedule actually helps me exceed in school. Uh, if you looked at me in first year, I was not an excellent student. And now I'm like doing fine. Um, so I just find it helps actually to have something you're passionate about, but knowing how to schedule everything because you have so much to do at the same time. So, yeah. Yeah. Matt? Yeah, I would say I, I agree. Uh, I'm only in like two courses right now. I'm actually near the end of my degree, so it's pretty chill. And that's the reason I actually took on the director role because I started cause I, restarting. Okay, that yeah, question. no problem. Um, I'm yeah, I'm actually only in two courses right now, which is why I took on the director role because I'm just finishing up my degree and I knew I would have the time relative to other semesters, so I figured I'd take the diet. Uh, but in the past, when I have had a full course load and done the show, I feel the exact same way as Brianne, where it's like, if in my spare time I'm doing something that I feel productive in and that I'm like inspired by, it kind of just rolls through everything, and I know I only have a certain amount of time to put into my school and this, and so it's just, it's more, uh, more of a, by necessity, I'm efficient. Whereas if I have like a couple free hours here or there, that turns into a full day of loafing around and preaching so, the choir. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. So, yeah, productivity breeds productivity most of the time. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. How would you feel about that? Um. So, I like to keep busy throughout the year. But again, I'm in my masters. But it's a masters by coursework, so I did have classes to do. Um. And it's mostly when you're in the cast it's mostly a second semester commitment so the fall semester you go through your auditions that's like Halloween weekend and then you're pretty much in the clear until um, January so so you guys are dealing with the time <laughs> yeah um, so that was fine like I did uh, I competed on um, animal welfare judging team and like I had like another whole other kind of life nice. last semester um, and then once this gets started rehearsals are every other day, so it's like Tuesday, Thursday, and then Sundays, um, and it's a huge time commitment, but for me it was nice because like it gave me something to look forward to every day, so I would go to my classes, do work on projects or something, and I'd be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna go to rehearsal tonight, like it would made me, it would make me more motivated to like finish what I had to do so I could um, put the energies in, um, and Again, I'm doing my master's, so um, my project doesn't start till uh, like April, so I had some time to throw Great in. Time. That's awesome. Yeah, it worked out really well. That's so <laughs> cool. Well, it's awesome that you guys are able to balance it, because it's really tough to do. I'm you know, doing a bunch of stuff too, and it's it's a nightmare. It's, yeah. like, <laughs> it's literally my alarm too, like, no, hurry up. <laughs> um, so on a final note, um, what do you guys want an, an audience member to say, uh, both from the perspective of someone who would have seen this Heather's before, and both from the per uh, perspective of someone who's you know just coming off the street saying, "Hey, look, I want to check out a musical on campus. Like, what's this like?" Uh, so, what would you want someone um, in both those perspectives to kind of take away from it? Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think that I I want them to walk in, and I I think every time that I walk into a live theater performance, I want to leave feeling inspired, and and a lot of the time. I don't know what I'm inspired about. I'll leave and I'll have to think about it. And I much prefer that to leaving with just like a happy feeling. I like feeling like I want to go digging somewhere. And I actually just went to a show last night, the main stage play, and, and I felt that way. And I'm still kind of mulling it through my head. But yeah, I, I want people to leave thinking about how they became who they are and why it's important to think about that. And I want them to think about how they can use that tool to... Um, help understand other people better and so if, if the show can inspire anybody to just kind of move forward and just be a little bit more um, just kind and and accepting of other people because everybody has those intentions but sometimes we get beaten down and we have to remember that and so it's not a revolutionary lesson but it's a lesson that it's nice to to check in on every once in a while so that's that's kind of where I'm coming from and that's what I get take away from the show every time that I watch it oh, that's awesome all right, well, thank you guys so much. Uh, on behalf of the Canon.ca, um, my name is Nick Marinak. Thank you for you know, taking a second out of your day. And I know you guys have another show tonight. Um, <laughs> and we'll get this out, and we can uh, you know, have some people look at it and uh, get some people out to some final shows. So. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks, Nick. Awesome. <laughs>